Welcome back to Waste Nights Second Edition. This should be the conclusion, but you never know. Things are wild. Okay, a couple little uh, correcty things going on. Uh, when we were moving, doing the travel action and doing the testing, the tech. Uh, in fact, Lisa was the only active night. If you read the details here for moving, uh, it says one night performs a travel action. Each night who does becomes an active night. So we should not have been rolling all those extra dice. We should have only been rolling the dice for Lisa. Lisa only has two white for tech. We need two successes, and she gets two successes. So boom, uh, that's how that works. Just wanted to correct that while we get lucky there. Uh, otherwise, we could have spent a, a plot token to get two successes. So just wanted to clear that up. And I also completely forgot that Lisa has booby trap advance. You can deal a damage to your enemy once per combat. We could have done that against the knights, uh, the ultimate marines, I mean. And that would have meant we only needed one damage, and there is a one, there's a four in six chance that if Lisa had used the lucky charm, uh, she may we may have defeated the knights completely. <sighs> so I don't know if we want to. I don't think we're going to blow lucky charm to do it. All right, we're going to continue now. We're sitting at the atoll. I do think we're going to do a camp action for each character. We're going to do camp action for Nelly, camp action for Lisa. Let's get over to their player mat areas and do that. All right, long shot here. We're doing a camp action for both. So we're going to have Lisa do her camp action first. She's got a repair of two. She's going to repair her barbed wire club for one. She doesn't have any leftover uh, repair for her assault armor, but we're not going to worry about that. She's also going to give Nelly an ammo because she's got a barbed wire club. Nelly's got the pistol. Get into any fights, we want Nelly to have the ammunition. And that's going to be it for Lisa's camp action. Oh, and she's also going to go ahead and give the vest over to Nelly. Boom! Good to go. And now it is Nelly's turn for a camp action. She's going to use her three repair to repair the assault armor that is sitting with Lisa uh, and she's actually going to give Lisa the vest and she's going to take the assault armor because it negates three damage the vest negates two but don't remember Nellie's got the plague so if she takes any damage she takes an extra contamination damage good to go so that was just a super quick turn they're both just camping out that's going to mean the turn marker is slipping down one though and then we have to decide what we're doing after that Alrighty, time ticking away. We're down to six, but we're almost at the base. And so let's go to the map and we're going to figure out what we want to do from there. All right, so we're sitting at the atoll. We are both going to become the active knight this time uh, because they're both going to do the move action simultaneously. So we're going to go to the atoll and the atoll says C84. So let's get out entry 84. We're going to read it. We're going to see what happens. 84, it says you're walking right next to the water line. At some point you climb a huge a high dune and freeze on its top. A small boy with a white virgin sand lies right under your feet. Navy blue bodies covered in slimy smooth skin are lying everywhere. You look around and see mutants on the beach swimming, sitting in the shade of the trees. Some of them look as if they were dancing. Others are sitting in old military tents staring at the horizon. Others still gathered on a tall, one tall pile are lying on each other and shaking in convulsions. What in the heck? So we come upon a strange scene. You try to bypass this place, C-79. Try to kill as many mutants as you can. <laughs> what? Oh, one of the knights has some dried meat. No! We used it already. Well, we're going to try to bypass this. This just does not sound like a good, uh, a good scene. All right, the active knights test survival together. They add all of their successes. Okay, so we only need two successes. We have two active knights this time, uh, and we're testing survival. All right, and survival. We have two green for Nelly, and we have a green and a white for Lisa. Let's roll up. We just need two successes. All right, so we have a total of three green and one white. And we can use plot tokens for two successes. So worst case scenario, if we whiff here, uh, we can just blow a plot marker to succeed at our test. And we end up getting 
And I, I think these are actually successes too. So two, three, four, we have like way, way more successes than we need to get by this weird mutant congregation. So uh, let's see. Pass. You give the beach a wide berth, choosing a path through a sparse jungle. It's a perfect moment to leave the coastline and head towards the base. You're already far away. When you hear a loud sound coming from the beach, it's something between a loud sigh and a passionate roar. It sends shivers up your spine. Each act of light gains an experience. Move the group marker to South Bay 6. Woohoo! All right, we both get an experience, and we're moving on up to the base. So whatever's happening at the beach, we don't really want to know. That sounded horrible. We get an experience each, and I think that means Nelly's going to level up once again. Whoa, Nelly. All right, so Lisa gets an experience. She's at five experience. Nelly gets one. She's at 13 experience. Nelly gets to level up once again. Let's take a look what she's got. She's got binoculars and the metal detector. Uh, I don't think we're going to worry about any of her actual equipment. Let's take a look at all the general ones. So we have, I think some of them are six. I'm just going to flip through these quickly. Uh, just to see, just to see, just to see, gunslinger. When attacking with a one-handed weapon, you resolve your attack before the enemy's ranged attack. Um, focused, testing any skill even in combat, you may flip this card to reroll one of your dice. When attacking barehanded or with a melee weapon, you flip this card to deal additional damage. Hmm, or specialize. Uh, when you get this card, place two your night tokens next to it, so we can, we can add, like, aid, negotiate, tech, uh... Oh boy, she's leveled up so many times. Let's go, let's go specialized. We'll add one on survival and one on, one on survival, one on aid. So we're going to go ahead and do that. So we've got a couple tokens. So she gets plus one success on survival, plus one success on aid. Alrighty, not bad. So that's, wow, we get to level up. Okay. And that's the end of the turn, so we got to move the turn marker again. All right, turn marker again, down to five, but we're at the base now, so I think this is going to be it. We are sitting at south base. We are uh, going to be looking at entry 105. We're going to be wrapping it up right here, uh, and it basically says, if the group marker is present on south base space, keep resolving entries according to their description until you reach one of the game's endings. Let's get to it. All right, we've made it to the south base, and we're going to 105 in the book, and we're going to wrap this up. We're going to find out what the ending is. Oh, I don't know if i got a good feeling or a bad feeling. I guess we're going to find out here in a moment. You're walking among the buildings. You've never seen a town from before the scourge so well preserved until now. Plants so common and wild everywhere else on the island are non-existent here, as if afraid to cross the town limits. It's unnaturally calm. Only the sound of the ocean echoes in this forsaken place. You look around, hoping to find the entrance to the base itself. A few locations draw your interest. It might be worth to check them out. We can choose together. Ah, uh, you can go to the chapel, you can go to the gym, or you can go to the bank. Huh. Well, uh, let's, let's go to the chapel, shall we? We're going to go to the chapel so we see entry number nine. It says, this old wooden building looks pretty good from the outside, but as you look at its interior, realize it's nothing but a ruin that might topple under the first strong gust of wind. You walk around the chapel and encounter a car. Someone reversed and smashed a huge metal trash can. Rear wheels are suspended a little above the ground. The driver, or rather his corpse, is still sitting behind the wheel. When you pull him out of the vehicle to search it, you hear some rustling from the chapel. Add all upgrade cards. Uh, add all upgrade cards the knights have. If the knights as a group have at least uh, holy, G have at least uh, knights times six experience, see thirty-three. We've got Nelly's got that by herself, so we would need a total of twelve experience. And all of our knights, we have thirteen. Uh, we have eighteen experience, so we're going to go to thirty-three. Right on. So we had a lot of experience. You enter the building, weapons in hands, rubbish is everywhere, especially under wooden benches. You're halfway through the main nave when one of the building walls comes to life. A mutant with a flat body, small head, and extra pair of limbs detaches itself from it. One of you shoots instinctively and hits. The beast croaks loudly, then starts to flee. If special card six is in the game, uh, place a chosen knight token on it. If this causes the destruction of the stink bug, step three of this round ends. Next round, no knight can explore in step two, and you have to resolve entry 105 in step three. You cannot choose the first option. If the special card number is not in the game, see 101. 
Wow, okay, let me just read that again. Place the chosen target on office, cause destruction of the knight. Uh, step three of this round ends next round. No knight can explore. Step two. All right, let's get a token on the stink bug from Lisa, and then we're gonna I'm gonna reread that, figure out what's going on. Okay, so what it means is we do have a token on here. The stink bug runs away. We're shot at it at the chapel. That's the end of our turn. So we have to go back to 105, choose a different location. We cannot go to the chapel again. So let's move the turn marker, and then we're gonna go back to 105 and choose. Uh, I forget it was the bank and somewhere else. All right, the turns are ticking down to four. Let's go back to our game playmat area and we're gonna go back to entry 105. All right, not bad, not bad. So we went to the church, uh, the stink bug was creeping around and we blasted it. So now we can either go to the gym or we can go to the bank. Let's go to the gym, get a little workout happening. So this is our next turn. The hall is full of equipment you can't quite recognize. You see weights and bars and devices one can sit on or lie on. You're looking around when you hear the sound of heavy foot steps coming from an adjacent room. You look inside, ready to fight. It's long, more like a corridor with lockers lining both walls. Two mutants are sitting at the far end of the room. Choose together. You, you call to the mutants. Why would we do that? Uh, at least one active knight is equipped with a ranged weapon and spends an ammo. Your companion aims at one of the creatures and shoots. We're going to have Lisa do that. She's got a pistol. She's going to spend her one ammo. And she's going to blast. One of the mutants. All right, um, C-171, so we're just keep going and going. Entry 171. And 171 says, uh, a chosen knight, active knight equipped with a ranged weapon, test guns two. Um, okay, two successes. Okay, hang on, we're gonna figure out which one. So an act, they're both active, Nelly's guns uh, is a green and blue, and Lisa's is two green, so Lisa's gonna check guns as I have to uh, change my battery now so she's got two green Maybe two successes no oh! test guns we're gonna blow a plot marker to give that three successes boom we succeed and we're gonna see what happens after we succeed all right we're resolving the pass so we pass the test boom the shot is definitely loud the larger mutant from the pair, catches the flying bullet midair with a lightning quick motion of his powerful hand. Oh, great. Dark blood stains the floor, but he seems unmoved by the wound. He takes a huge gun from a locker and opens fire while his smaller companion flees outside. The active knight gains an experience. C215. Well, that will level uh, Lisa up. She's up to six experience now. Okay, and we're going to see uh, 215. Oh my god, things are getting wild here at the base. 215, search the highway desert wasteland deck for the Cerbero finest enemy card. A chosen knight resolves combat with him according to normal rules. Place two wound tokens on this enemy. Oh my goodness. All right, we've got to find the Cerbero's finest. All right, we found Cerbero's finest. He's threat one, relentless. Uh, which means he is just going to shoot at you no matter, you can't t pick him off. He's ranged, five health, one-handed weapons deal, one less damage to this enemy. Oh boy, I think we are going to have Lisa attack him, but that's one less damage. Or we can use Nelly with the pistol. Uh, threat one. All right, let's get the threat token on the bag. Oh man, this, this is the giant mutant that is looking nasty. Threat token out of the bag and a damage oh great just fantastic all right we are going to have nelly spend an ammo she's gonna she's gonna shoot at him uh so it's simultaneous shooting with guns she gets a green and three white and he's rolling a blue and a red yikes okay blue and a red for this guy attack nelly and gets three damage Okay, that's we can suck that up a little bit. Three damage on Nelly. Nelly now gets to roll her pistols, and we need five damage. Come on, Nelly! Yes, Nelly picks them off with her pistol, just popping them off. I love it. Absolutely fantastic. Uh, sorry, Nelly's going to take uh, an extra damage. She's going to take four. Uh, wow. <laughs> okay, right on. So uh, let's find out what happens to this guy. So Nelly, just with a lot of ammunition, just takes him out. Okay, I gotta find the entry here. Um, if the enemy is defeated, 
The powerful mutant drops without a single sound of pain. The banshee falls on, breaks under his weight. Your ears are still ringing after the firefight, but you pursue the giant's companion. C191. Oh, wow. So he absolutely, Nelly absolutely picks this guy right off. 191, you go outside and carefully look around, noticing the mutant's shape at the end of an alley. Choose together, you approach the runway or you retreat. So we're following the short uh, guy. We're, um, you approach the runway. Okay, hang on. Let me let me deal Nelly's damage first before we get too carried away. So this guy got absolutely annihilated by Nelly with her sharpshooting pistol abilities. But we got to go deal damage to Nelly. Oh goodness. Okay, Nelly's going to take a total of four damage. She can negate three of it by breaking this, but that still means she's going to take one damage. And remember, because she has the plague, every time she takes any amount of damage, which is even one, she also has to take a contaminated damage, but she's still kicking. All right, let's make our choice, uh, see what we want to do next. And our choice is where you approach the runway or you retreat. Let's approach the runway. We're not backing out now. We're going to go to 154. All right, we're approaching the runway. 154, let's see that in the book here. It says, you're getting closer and closer, he's standing. Yet he's standing and as if he's melded with the pavement. When you're but a few steps away, he starts to retreat at a slow pace. He gets across a hole in the fence and you follow. You end up at an old swimming pool next to a ruined sports hall. Years of disuse has turned the water inside into a swamp. More creatures similar to the one you've been following or weltering in the dank goo. When they see you, they start to hiss and bristle. They don't look particularly warlike, so we can choose together. You intimidate the beast with weapons and shouting. You assault them, 67. You spend, oh damn it, uh, two gas together. Throw a couple canisters in the pool and light them up. Damn it, we have no gas. Um, well, let's try to intimidate them. We don't want to get absolutely annihilated for no reason. So that's going to entry 98. The active knights test negotiate together. They add all obtained successes. All right, so we're going to be uh, testing negotiate and our negotiate skills. Damn it, I didn't pick the extra one for Nelly. So one white. So we're testing two white Ooh, for negotiate. And what did we need for successes to negotiate? We need two successes. Come on, girls, you can do it. Yes. We negotiate successfully. Wow, we're getting pretty lucky here. All right, uh, pass. The creatures outnumber you, but it seems they've never encountered humans before. Scared as hell, they start to run in one direction like a herd of sheep. You follow them and reach a large building. The mutants stand at its tall steel gate and start to bang on them. When they notice you, they scatter in all directions. It's calm and empty now, so you can check the gate. There's a huge word, lab, painted on it. Each active knight gains an experience, C341. All right, we each get an experience, and then we see 341. Experience time, Nelly up to 14 experience. Star of the show, and we have seven for Lisa. We can't camp or anything, so we're going to 341 now to continue the story. All right, let's find 341 in the book. Uh, oh boy, it's a long ending. 341, interlude. Each unconscious knight performs one free regain consciousness action. The longer you look at the gate, the better you understand if it's a no simple entrance. There's no padlock or sliding bolt. Instead, there's a metal box on the wall. Inside, you find a dead screen, keyboard, camera, and some other uh, sensors you've never seen before. Speaking of cameras, the whole front of the building boasts at least four or five more. The thing you're looking for, the heart of the base, must be hidden behind this barrier. Decide the rest for a while and consider your options. Each knight may perform a camp action. Woohoo! Important. From now on, you no longer spend any actions. The steps of the round are omitted and you stop counting rounds. The story is detailed in the following entries and instructions. All right, we get a free camp action and then we continue on. Right on, let's do our free camp action. All right, so free camp action. We are going to go ahead and uh, Nelly is going to repair her armor. And we have no medicine or anything else we can do. So that's it. So we're just, uh, we both do a camp action, no medicine. So nothing much we can do. But whatever we do, Lisa does have the lucky charm. We have to remember that. All right, back to our last series of entries. And that's going to wrap it up. So far, it's been quite the harrowing adventure. All right, let's see. Somewhat refreshed, you resume your endeavor. 
you could try to work out the dead terminal or take a more direct approach. Choose one night and, and choose together. You check the terminal or you focus on the gate. I think we're going to check the terminal because we have, damn it, we have the tool giving us a blue die for tech. So we're going to check the terminal. We're going to 322. Hey, yay, okay, 322. You dismantle the terminal and manage to power it up. Now you have to figure out the proper code. A chosen knight tests tech 3. For each other knight whose tech is at least one green die, the testing knight obtains an additional success. Okay, so um, we have the electro tool. We're going to have Nelly test tech. She's got a green. She'll have a green, blue, and white, and we need three successes. Green, blue, white, and three successes for Nelly. All right, green, blue, white. We need three successes, and we can spend plot tokens for two, and we get one, two. I don't know if this is a success uh, on test. I think any symbol is a success. Anyway, I'm going to spend a plot token for two, just in case that is incorrect, because I don't have time to check everything at the moment. So we pass. We pass the tech. Test. All right. Uh, I gotta remember which entry I'm at. Alrighty, so we passed the Tech 3 test. Uh, lines of numbers are displayed on the screen, then a sentence appears. Emergency access granted, and the gates open with a dull clang. See below, skipping the fail paragraph. Okay. Um, mm -mm. No matter the test results, C275. If you noted on the Outback Chronicles that the robots regrouped, C17. Oh man, the robots did regroup. So we are going to see 17. You're about to enter the building when you hear metallic noises. The constructs you left behind seemingly had no intention to leave you alone. Choose one night for each gear enemy set aside next to the plot sheet. That would be the jammer. Chosen Knight resolves combat according to normal rules. Okay. Um, all right. So it looks like we're going to have Lisa try to beat the jammer up with her baseball bat. So let's go ahead and do that. All right. So the jammer is a threat. One. Lisa's going to take him on. I'm on, Lisa. I believe in you. And the threat token is gets that symbol. Resolution break the weapon you're using this combat. Huh, okay, well, whatever. <laughs> she might break it over his head. She will be using the barbed wire club, uh, which is two green and two green. It's, he's ranged. He gets to fire at her first. Ooh, let's hope it doesn't knock her out. Two green, and so she's going to be rolling three green and a white for her barbed wire club, and he's going to be rolling a green, blue, and red. Oh, dear. So green, green, blue, red attacks her doing uh, resolution break the weapon you're using so she just she's going to break the weapon and only one damage she has her vest and she's just going to say you know what i'm negating all your damage dude but she will break her barbed wire club so it might break twice all right uh actually i think it breaks right now i think it breaks right now resolution break the weapon yeah so she has her barbed wire club is broken to start with so she's going to be rolling two white and a green. So three white and a green, and she needs four successes. Come on. And she pounds him into the dirt with her barbed wire club. Defeated. Two successes and a gear card. Right on. Or two level, sorry, two experience and a gear card. All right, so Lisa's making up for lost time. Boom, she's leveling up again, but there's no camp actions. And she gets a gear card, and the gear card she gets from this guy is the Blue Pills. Uh, you may discard this card after drawing enemy wasteland to ignore its traits except for ambush. Okay, well, she gets some pills. <laughs> All right, let's see what happens when we succeed to uh, defeating the Jammer. And the episode continues. <laughs> All right, it says, if all enemies are defeated, you wreck your steel pursuers and move on. Each knight who defeated their enemy additionally gains an experience. That is going to wrap uh, Lisa up to 10 experience. Wow, she's catching up to Nelly. Unbelievable. All right, and then uh, no matter the combat result, move the enemy, uh, remove the enemy cards from the game and see 275. Are we finally concluding here at <laughs> 275? Oh my goodness. All right, 275, you go inside, a spacious hall opens up before you. Most of its floor is actually a wide elevator platform. You could easily park two trucks on it. Uh, there's a console, the corner buttons 0 to 9, they glow faintly. Choose together. 
One of the knights discards a piece of the base plan. We don't have a piece of the base plan. So we have to choose this one. You assume the command center in the lowest level. So you press the nine, minus nine button, the elevator starts to descend. We're off to 46 uh, for yet more pain and suffering. You're descending slowly, passing one sublevel after another. Every time you see identical, seemingly endless corridors you're counting, the base has nine floors buried deep underneath. If you, something goes wrong, you're never returning to the surface. Finally, you reach the bottom. The tunnel you're walking now could easily do for a truck road. Its concrete walls are moist, and it's barely bright enough for you to stumble into something. Every 10 or 15 meters, there's a large red button with an SOS sign marked on it. You hear mutants from afar, their lumbering gate, the hoarse breasts echo in the tunnel. It's a big group, gray-skinned, black-eyed monsters. Upon seeing you, they start to act like predators. They move with cat-like grace and naturally spread to flank you. Take card number seven from the special deck and place it face up on the plot sheet. This is the ultimate Marines again, starting from the first player. Each conscious knight resolves combat with the enemy according to normal rules. The enemy loses ambush but gains threat two instead of threat one uh, during the combat. Before the final first combat with the ultimate Marine, draw two tokens from the threat two. Uh, affects both com combatants. Oh my Good lord. All right, we've got to fight them again because we didn't have the base plans. Damn it! All right, the fish boys are at it again. They don't get, um, they don't get the ambush, but they do get a couple of threat tokens. Oh, god damn it. Armor piercing and two damage. Ay, ay, ay. All right, Nellie's up first. She's going to spend her final ammunition. She's going to shoot at this dude and see if we can take it out because they don't have ambush, so we get to shoot first. If we can do eight damage... We're gonna kill it. <laughs> We're gonna kill it. Now he's got a pistol, two white. She has a green and three white. Can you get uh, eight successes? Yes, you can. Come on, Nelly. We need eight successes, and we get three. Three damage. Oh dear, that's not the greatest. So three damage goes on these guys, uh, but they do get to attack us, and they're gonna attack Nelly with a white, a green, <laughs> and a blue. And they have armor piercing, so Nelly's armor does nothing. And that is three damage to Nelly. Oh boy, let's take let's have her take her down. Three, sorry, five damage to Nelly. I think that just knocked her out. No, it can't end this way. So she takes five damage. Oh man, and that is going to knock her out. So three. I don't think, and she gets a contaminated damage because she took damage. It's armor piercing. She gets a contaminated damage. She gets three. Sorry. Four four and another one five i think that takes her over so three four five six seven eight so we wouldn't take the final one so boom she gets an unconscious card nelly is unconscious okay she's got the tar beaten out of her let's see if uh, lisa with her baseball club can take this thing out Okay, Lisa's up. Oh my god, it's uh, it's going to be a battle. We have white, green, blue, white, blue, and green. It's attacking Lisa for four damage. Ouch. Armor piercing, four, five, sorry, six damage. Is Lisa knocked out? She's knocked out. Oh god, cover. But does she take it out with the club? She's going to get two white and a green and a white. Okay. Two white, green, and white. Come on! And she gets one, and she's going to spend the lucky charm, discard it to re-roll one die. And that's going to be a total of two more damage. Five damage, total of eight. Not going to cut it. And Nelly is also knocked out. So let's go ahead and knock her out. Well, I do believe that's the end of her playthrough. She's going to take two, four, five, six, seven, eight. She's also unconscious and i think if both knights are unconscious at the same time it's game over man game over so i think that's let me just recheck the rules oh dear all right we're continuing on it says the ultimate marine is not destroyed the mutants fight like feral beasts and you have nowhere to run some of them fall but so do all of you you're struggling to free yourselves but the creatures are pinning you to the floor Executing one by one with their clawed hands. C-150. Oh, good lord. We go to 150, the hellish island. Why were you so eager to loot all those treasures from before the scourge? If you weren't facing certain death now, you'd probably be fooling yourselves that you thought about the people of Perth, or about eliminating a threat that might endanger the waste. But the truth is, 
First you saved your skin, then your pride, in the end you won't even save your lives. The knights fail. No! <laughs> Armor piercing killed us. We could have survived this and carried on. And it probably would have been another episode. So, oh my goodness. So that's going to be the end of that. I have read enough today. This episode has gone on forever. We've failed, and if we didn't fail, I'd looked ahead a little bit. There's a ton more. So, wow. That was Safe Haven Waste Night 2nd Edition. So, thanks so much for watching along. Thanks for comments, descriptions, likes. We failed. We both got knocked unconscious and eaten by the ultimate marine fish brood. All right, thanks so much. We'll see you next time in another complete playthrough series. I don't know what it's going to be, but I'll see you then. So, thanks so much, and see you in the next playthrough series.